Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Coventry Speedway, where tonight the Coventry have the honour of staging the World Under 21 Championship. I've now got with me from the Edinburgh Monarchs, Freddie Shot. Freddie, your second Under 21 Championship. Looking forward to tonight's meeting. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it got cancelled yesterday, and the weather is quite good today. So, um, just hope you know, go out and have a really good race. Your first appearance at Coventry. Have you been? Had you had a walk around the Brandon track tonight? Yeah, I had a practice around today as well, and uh, it was you know, compared to how much rain was falling, it surprised me a lot. It's really good. Obviously, you practiced this morning. It's been drying all day. Is, it, is the track going to be different tonight with the continual drying during the day to what it was for the practice? Maybe be a little, just a slightly, you know, slick, but um, it should be about the same. You can pass on the outside, I reckon, during the meeting. It's been a tremendous year once again for Denmark this season. Four Danes in the lineup tonight, and obviously, you're looking to be in one of those first three places tonight. <laughs> Yeah, we've we done quite good to have four people here today and, uh, you know, everyone's got a chance for, for making it. I just hope I'll be the one. Thanks a lot, Freddie, and the best of luck tonight. OK, thanks. Thank you. I've now got with me England's representative here this evening, Joe Screen. Joe, looking forward to tonight's meeting. Yeah, I'm very looking forward to it. The track looks good, a bit of dirt there. Then, like, I'm just going to do what I normally do when I come here and just do my best and see how we go along. With the weather like it's been, it's going to be a little bit wet. That may well favour you not being the quickest of gators. Well, I can't get to save my life. Uh, I made some good starts this year, but not every start I've made this year is good. Uh, but like, I enjoy it riding in the wet. I really love it, you know, because with the grass tracks, when I was younger, like, rain, riding in the wet was like every, every weekend, you know. So uh, I hope it does rain a bit. Bearing in mind the difficult job you've had getting to this final, one way or another, obviously you'll be looking for all the English fans to get behind you tonight. Yeah, I want to do that. Uh, I missed practice. Uh, I got told yesterday when it got called off that to be here at 3 o'clock. So we get to see you at 3 o'clock today and they wouldn't let me practice because we had to be here at 1 o'clock. So, like, somebody told me wrong, I think, because we come here at 3 o'clock and they wouldn't let me practice. So, I don't know, we're still having problems as far as the final as well. So, uh, it's like from problems from day one to, like, today. More problems. And obviously missing a vital match for your club tonight with Bellevue at Wolverhampton tonight. Yeah, I don't know if they really looked to see if anybody was riding, like, uh, when they made the decision yesterday. Uh, but, like, I should be at Wolverhampton tonight, and Bellevue's got to really win there. So, uh, you know, it's... I can't really say much about that. It's obviously the first time the actual Under-21 Championship of the World has been staged in England. In your own country, you'd like to be the first one to win that first time in England. Yeah, I want to win it. I, I go pretty well around Coventry, and uh, we're looking at the boys in practice. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult because there's some really good riders here today and uh, I just want to do my best and see where that brings me. I've got with me now a rider who's sure to get plenty of support tonight, Jakob Olsen. Jakob, you really must be looking forward to this meeting tonight. Yeah, definitely am. You know, the world final is always the biggest thing, you know, we all go for. So I'm so glad to qualify. Last year I qualified so too, but I uh, got ill, you see. 
So uh, I'm just going to go out there and do my best, you know, so I'm looking forward for it. Do you think there's going to be a lot of pressure on you tonight with the fact that this, the final is being staged at Coventry, where your dad literally became a legend when he raced here? Yeah, of course. There, there, was, there will always be a big pressure, you know. Everybody thinks, you know, it's so easy for me to do it, but then it, it, sometimes it's harder, you know. But um, I, I've got three years to, to win this under-21 in, so uh, I've got plenty of time. I'm just going to do my best. Are you pleased the way things are going for you? Can all the Coventry fans keep saying, oh, Jakob's going to come this year, then Jakob's going to come next year? I mean, are you pleased the way things are going for you at the moment? Yeah, I must say, you know, it's been going really brilliant. As I said, I had this illness last year that took me, you know, a half a season back, and I'm not really over it yet. I still take some pills, but... And then uh, I've got my working apprenticeship as a car mechanic in Denmark, and I just want to finish that, and that is in 93. So um, if Coventry wants me, I'll be here. Were you able to practice this afternoon? And if so, how did you find the track? I'm telling you, the track this day when we were practicing was the best track I ever been on. It was just so good, you know, and grippy because it's been so much rain the couple of days, and um, it's just the best I've been on. Has your dad given you any advice as to how to ride the Coventry circuit, or is he just leaving it to you to do your best tonight? You know, uh, everybody thinks, you know, he's pushing on, you know, come on, you've got to do it, but it's, it's been on the other way. I've always learned it on my own way, and um, I've been doing it all by myself, and I really enjoy that because I think that's a lot better, you know. But he's, he tells me, you know, wh when you're getting really good, you know, I'll be there for helping you, so I'm really glad to hear that. Thanks a lot, Jacob, and I'm sure there'll be hundreds of Coventry fans here tonight. Delighted to see you, see you riding this Brandon track. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. These four riders come from Poland to the World uh, Individual Junior Championship final to Coventry, and uh, this riders represent the two clubs, two riders from Unia Rolnicki Tarnow and uh, two riders from Stal Gorzów. And uh, Marek Huchko come from Stal Gorzów. Ile masz lat? Best. He's a 20 year old. Jak długo jeździsz? 4 lata. He's racing for a year. 21 lat, 4 lata. Palu, he's uh, 20 years old, 21 years old and he's racing for a year. 20 lat, 4 lata. Uh, Jacek Rempała, 21 years old and he racing for a year. And Robert Kuzio? Uh, 20 lat, 3 lata. And he's at 20 years and he racing three years. And I hope so this ride is going good. I've now got with me no stranger, two English fans, Zenon Plek. Zenon, first of all, welcome back to Coventry. You are the Polish team manager for this evening's meeting. And we've got with us Paul, Peter Polash, one of your riders. How is Peter looking forward to tonight's meeting? Jak, jak sądzisz, jak wypadniesz w dzisiejszych zawodach? Chciałbym wypadać jak najlepiej, nie zawieść trenera, kierownika, ekipy. Myślę, że po treningu mi się dobrze jechało i na zawodach będzie równie dobrze. He think he feel the track on a practice, you know, is good. And he think he do his best on the meeting. And he think should be good. Most of the tracks in Poland are big tracks, and this is one of our biggest tracks here at Coventry, as you know. This must track must be to his liking. Czy czy ten tor, bo wszystkie tory w Polsce są torami o wiele większymi. Ten jest jednym z największych torów w Anglii. Czy czy w ogóle nie sprawia ci problemów? Nie, nie. Mi z reguły tory krótkie lepiej mi się jeździ na krótkich torach niż na długich u nas w Polsce. He likes it to small tracks and prefers small tracks better than long ones, big ones. Who does he ride for in Poland, Zelen, and how is he doing in the Polish league? He riding for Stal Gorzów, used to my and Eddie Janka's club, and uh, I'm asking how he doing in the league. Jak jak w lidze jeździ ci się w tym roku w Polsce? Początek sezonu miałem nawet niezły, pokonałem Pera Jonsona, Lee Adamsa. Ale końcówka taka trochę nie bardzo. Dopiero na ostatnim meczu zrobiłem 8 punktów. 
when when we start the league this year he's very good form he beat per johnson he beat lee adams and afterwards something his form is dropped and last couple of meetings he's good things are improving greatly in polish speedway at the moment and you're getting very very big crowds to watch your racing yeah we have our average for the league meeting just say over 10,000 people per meeting are you enjoying your stay back over in England again? Nice to be back, you know, and I, I think we bring next year Polish troop to second division clubs. And I think, you know, we must do something to lifting up Polish Speedway. Thanks for having a word with us, Ellen. Will you thank Piotr for, for having a word with us and wish him the very best of luck tonight? Dziękuję Ci za wywiad, no i wszystkiego najlepszego dzisiejszego. Ja również dziękuję. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I've now got with me Ollie Olsen. Ollie, first of all, it's very, very nice to see you back here at Brandon. It's nice to be back again. Thank you. It's a very proud occasion for you, obviously, the fact that your son has reached the under-21 championship and the fact that it's now being staged at Coventry this year must be a real bonus for you. Well, it is. It's, of course, uh, as you say, that Jakob is in it is uh, good and uh, that it's at Coventry. I think, though, it, it does put a lot of pressure on him and... Uh, He's still young, you see, so, you know, let's see how he goes. Obviously, the people keep asking, when is Jakob going to come and ride for Coventry? You state it'll be 1993. Are you prepared to go any farther than that at the moment? Well, uh, he wants to come over, and of course it's up to him, and Charles has already uh, sort of done a contract with him ages ago, and uh, he made sure he signed up, and uh, of course Jakob is... Uh, He's a Coventry man and he would love very much to come here and uh, as soon as he's finished with his uh, schools and apprenticeships, you know, then uh, he can do what he wants. But uh, we said to him he's got to do that first and then, uh, and then that would be that he could start the 93 season here. Are you pleased the way Jakob's progressing with his speedway at the moment? Yes, I think he's doing well, but it doesn't worry me that much. I mean, uh, I've helped him along to point him in the right direction so he's safe to ride and then he has to do what he has to do and he can only do it through hard work and everything and, and he does that so I think he's gone a long way and uh, he puts the effort into it that you've got to do so I'm pleased with that but then again it is up to him you see what he wants to get out of it and how he will do it but uh, he looks very keen as the first Danish world champion you must be delighted the way things have gone again for Denmark total clean sweep of everything again this season Yes, Denmark, of course, is fully back on the map again, and um, I must say we've done really well, and of course I think it was a great bonus for us to uh, Jano Peterson winning the world individual title. Uh, I think that was very good, and it's nice to see Tommy Knudsen back on the level that he is, and of course Hans is there, and um, we have a couple of other young ones coming up, like Brian Karger and uh, Gerd Hanberg, and then, of course, we have the, the under-21 boys waiting underneath, so we're doing very well. As a rider who is very, very close to Tommy Knudsen, you must be delighted the way he has come back from those horrendous injuries. Yes, he's done really well. And, uh, but again, you know, he's done it through determination and hard work, and uh, it always do pay off. As I say, you know, it, you've got to be very, very keen, and you've got to try hard for things. And Tommy's done that. He works hard, so the bonus comes as well. Thanks, Odolly, and once again, it's a delight to see you back at Brandon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. I've now got with me from the Ipswich Witches and Australia, Shane Parker. Shane, looking forward to tonight's meeting. Yeah. Obviously, being here with Ipswich last week, you've got use of the circuit. Is that going to be an advantage for you tonight? Um, maybe, maybe not. They've had a lot of rain on the track in the last couple of days, but um, last week really couldn't have happened at a better time for me, and I got a chance to sort both my bikes out. And, haven't had to practice for the meeting, so um, everything's tuned up for it, so. And obviously you had a good night here with the Ipswich last week. That, again, must boost your confidence for tonight. Yeah, I had a reasonably good night. Um, like once again, I was using both my bikes, trying to sort a few things out. One engine was a bit off, but we've got all that sorted out now, and so hopefully we'll win tonight. I would imagine you practiced this afternoon like the rest of them. Was the track very much different to what it was last Saturday? Um, I don't know. I went here for practice. I got here um, just on signing on time, so... Um, don't know how anybody went, I don't know how the track was, but it looks pretty good at the moment, so... On a personal note, you must be pretty pleased the way things have gone for you and Ipswich in their first season back in Division 1. Yeah, we've had a... Well, start of the season, I, I came late to England. Um, 
and we sort of we weren't going too well at the start and then we won 14 tournament leading at Peterborough and I think that boosted the whole team and we sort of we've all been on a high since then and we've all done well and like we've climbed the league I think we're in about roughly sixth place now so considering we're such a young side now I think we've done well to get where we are it's proved a few people wrong that thought we we were going to be looking towards relegation thanks a lot Shane and the very best of luck tonight no worries Tal cheers, cheers mate I've now got with me Nicholas Klingsberg from Sweden. First of all, welcome to Coventry for the Under-21 Championship tonight. Thank you. You've got alongside you your teammate in Sweden, Rick Miller. Has Rick given you any advice how to ride the Coventry track for tonight's meeting? Yeah, he had helped me a little. Yeah. We've ridden together in Sweden for two years and um, well, Nicholas is a good lad and he's been riding really good this year so I just wanted to help him out tonight. Uh, you know, it's tough in a strange country, and we just had a walk on the track, and the track looks perfect. And uh, we just need a little bit of luck. That's all we need because Nicholas is riding really well, and I think he can do really, really good tonight. And uh, it's a good chance this meeting to sh um, show a lot of the young talent in the world. Were you able to do the practice? Some riders got to the practice this afternoon, and some didn't. Were you able to practice this afternoon? Yeah, I was. It's, I, uh, yeah, it was good. <laughs> Yeah. The track was to your liking? Yeah, it was. What sort of average is he holding in Sweden at the moment, Rick? Uh, to be honest, I couldn't tell you, but I'll tell you one thing about the track. Um, the, the track we ride at Marystad every other week, um, it's very similar to this one. So uh, that's very good for Nicholas. Um, it's smooth like this one. Coventry is probably 30 meters larger, but in scale. So. Um, you know, it, it was probably nice for Nicholas to, uh, among, you know, more than any other riders, this track is very similar to his home track, so, you know, that should work out to his advantage. If you went road well tonight, would you be looking for a base in the British League in England next season? Yeah. Yeah, it would be fun. Yeah. Do you think it would be a good asset to a British promoter for next season, Rick? Absolutely. You know, it's, um, to be honest, I hadn't asked Nicholas that question myself, so, you know, I'm just hearing it also. But uh, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard move, but Nicholas is riding well, and I've always said, you know, Speedway isn't just riding on the track, it's, it's your whole life. You know, there's a lot, a lot of other things involved because 90% of the time you aren't racing. But um, if Nicholas wants to do it, he's just got to apply himself, and I think, you know, he would be a good asset to a team. Thank you for having me with us, and the very, very best of luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Rick. Secretary General Jerry Coles is with us tonight. 
They provide the international timekeeper and technical steward, Mr. John Homer and Mr. Richard Sullivan. Well, better late than never. We're looking forward to some good racing tonight. And to set the scene on the centre green, over to our master of ceremonies, Mr. Peter York. Yes, thanks very much, Peter. Once again, a welcome to Cordry for this FIM World Under-21 Championship as we gaze now at the pit gate. Uh, top car in the Lincoln Continental, our VIPs on their way around along with the competitors, all 18 of them at 16 and 2 reserves, as you'll appreciate. In the Lincoln Continental, Mr. John Taylor, the Managing Director of CPL, Co Products Limited, and of course it's their sponsorship that they're marketing this championship under the banner of Home Fire. And also Caroline Braddock as well from the Promotions Department. We welcome uh, from the uh, SCD and the ACU, Mr. Bill Smith. We also welcome Mr. Jerry Coleman as well. Uh, from the ACU, the general council members from Division 1 and Division 2 of the Sunlight Leagues. Well, at the moment, of course, the competitors will be coming out and you'll have your chance to meet and greet uh, each and every one of them. A lot of new names, uh, a lot of different colored leathers, and one or two different race jackets for us to watch tonight, and some great names that I'll try and get my tongue round as the evening goes on. Well, now the competitors uh, dismount from the parade track to their various positions. Uh, tonight, of course, they're going to be introduced uh, to Mr. Tim Swells and Mr. Morris Ducker from the BSPA. Eric uh, Bukov with us on the centre green. So now Eric Bukov is going to meet the competitors along with our VIPs and Mr. John Taylor, of course, the Managing Director of CPL. And, of course, England's responsibilities rest on the competitor number one, representing the United Kingdom, Joe Screen. Well, 18-year-old Joe Screen, of course, rides for Bellevue, a regular England international, and, of course, the British Under-21 Championship, and we wish him lots of luck. So Joe Screen then at number one. At number two, from Poland, Peter Pasch. Well, Peter's 22 years old, been riding for four years, and been discovered by a good old name for British Speedway, Zeman Black. So we welcome Peter Pasch. At number three, also from Poland, Robert Kazal. Robert's 21 years old and is the 1990 bronze helmet winner. So there we are, John Taylor meets him. We move on now to competitor number four from Sweden, Jakob Carlsson. So Jakob is, uh, as I say, from Sweden, 19 years old and the Swedish junior champion. On to competitor number five from Poland, Marek Hako. Marek's 21 years old. He's uh, Second in the Polish Youth Championships in 1988. And we wish him lots of luck for this evening. <laughs> Competitor number six from Russia, the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union, Viktor Gallium. <laughs> Great to see Viktor. He's 19 years old, a member of the Rodno team over there in the Ukraine. And uh, he was third in the Soviet Championships in 1990. At number seven, well, a name that is synonymous with uh, Coventry's track, of course, from Denmark, Jakob Olsen. 19-year-old Jakob, of course, son of the world-famous former world champion, Ollie Olsen. It's great to see Jakob here. And third in the Danish Junior Championships last year, 1990. From Hungary, put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Zolt Bazarmani. Well, Zolt is 20 years old, as I say, from Hungary, and a 1991 national junior champion. John Taylor is waxing lyrical with foreign languages. Absolutely wonderful, John. We never realized this hidden uh, talent you have. Let's move on to meet competitor number nine, representing Australia, birth with Glasgow. And I know there's a lot of supporters come over the border to welcome Jason Lyons. 21-year-old Jason Lyons, then regular Australian international, and third in the Australian National Championships, and uh, of course flying not only the Australian flag, but the Scotland flag as well for Glasgow. No problems with that language, John. Let's now meet competitor number 10, representing Denmark, Brian Anderson. 21-year-old Brian Anderson then, and the Danish qualifier for this uh, championship, seventh in last year's World Under-21 final. Riding at number 11, representing Poland, Adam Lewetsky. 19-year-old Adam Lewetsky then second in the Polish bronze helmet and uh, a, uh, his second under-21 championship. And number 12 in your programs, ladies and gentlemen, from Sweden, Jimmy Ingman. 20-year-old Jimmy Ingman then recovering from horrific leg injuries 
and rides for the Stockholm Club. We've got a few Jimmy's fans here as well. Great to have you along. And number 13, also from Sweden, Nicholas Klingberg. From Nick, uh, Nicholas Klingberg, 18 years old, third in the Swedish 80cc championship of 89 and 90. And uh, a pretty popular guy as well by all the cats. Let's move on now to competitor number 14, representing the DMU Denmark, Morten Andersson. Well, the Nordic Under-21 champion uh, competes for Rost in the Danish Super League. Morton Anderson at number 14. <laughs> On to competitor number 15 from Australia and with Ipswich in Division 1 of the Sunbright League, Shane Parker. 21-year-old Shane Parker then, the South Australian champion, regular Australian international. And we welcome him here tonight. Competitor number 16 from Denmark, Freddie Schatz. <laughs> and of course, Freddie is uh, riding with Edinburgh in the uh, Division 2 of the San Bryan League, 20 uh, year old, his second appearance. And he's number two in the Edinburgh match averages, which is great. So we march on then with our two reserves from Poland, Jarek Rampala. 20 years old, Jarek Rampala then as uh, number 17, first reserve of the meeting. And finally, let's give him a welcome, the man who almost went to Russia, but not quite. He is representing the United Kingdom, and he is Dean Barker. 21-year-old Dean Barker then with Oxford in the uh, first division of the Sunbright League. Those, ladies and gentlemen, are the competitors for this, the Hobart World Under-21 Championship staged in the United Kingdom here at Coventry. Good luck. Uh, best wishes to all the competitors. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll get into heat number one of this World Under-21 Championship in a moment. So having met now the riders, competitors for tonight's meeting, I'll hand you over to Peter Morris up in the box. Thank you. Well, thanks, Peter, for your expert pronunciation of the competitors in tonight's meeting, all 18 of them. We've been 16 actions, starting with the first point, heat one in a few seconds time. I've never with me in the pits, a very interesting spectator for tonight's meeting, the reigning under-21 champion, Chris Louie. First of all, Chris, welcome to Coventry. Thanks very much, yeah. Obviously, you've surveyed the field. Your tip for tonight's under-21 championship? Um, I think, really, you've got to look at uh, the... You know, the people with the experience around Coventry, which is probably Joe Screen and uh, Shane Parker, you know, I think, I think they're going to be battling at the top. Um, then, of course, you know, the, you've got the Danes, um, Olsen, you know, Jakob is obviously going to have a lot of experience in his father here tonight. Ollie rode here for many years, so, uh, and Brian Anderson as well, he goes quite well. So, uh, I don't know, you know, it's, this sort of event brings out a lot of unknowns, which probably makes them an ex you know, exciting event to watch, so we'll have to see. Your teammate Shane Parker with a probable added advantage of riding here last Saturday with the Ipswich team, that must put him in good stead for tonight. That's right, yeah, I mean he was in Heat 15 last week so he's probably the last bloke on the track, you know, I mean you can't have better preparation than that. And uh, I've seen him here two or three times this year and he's had good meetings every time so let's hope that he can put one of them on tonight. Now this meeting has been given a status, what actually does it mean to actually win the title? You, you're the running champion, what has it done for you this season? Um, well, obviously, it gives you a title, you know, like you say, it's a world title and, um, you know, it's tremendous when it helps you pick up a few sponsors throughout the year if you can go up to them and, and tell them that you're world champion. Um, as you can see, Kenny McKenna standing behind me, looks like a monkey. Um, no, it, it helps a tremendous a lot, so, um, you know, whoever win it um, is obviously going to be proud tonight, staying on top of the rostrum. The first time under its official title of World Under 21 that's been staged in this country. In the past, it has been staged as the European Under 21 Championship. And while he's on the track then for heat number one, riding in red from England and the Barbie Aces, it's Joe Screen. Riding in blue from Star Gorso Club in Poland, Peter Polacz. 
in white from Tarno in Poland, Robert Kuzdil and in yellow and black from Sweden, Joachim Carlsen. That's a lot then for heat number one. So obviously, the great disappointment the fact that the meeting was rained off yesterday afternoon has obviously had an effect on the crowd, but the crowd have been gradually drifting in since seven o'clock, but obviously robbed of many long distance commuters with that appalling conditions we had yesterday afternoon. A referee from Denmark, despite the fact that there are four Danes in tonight's meeting. Anyway, FIM rules apply tonight. Joe Screen, gate one. Palach, gate two. Kudzel, gate three. And Carlson, gate four. Kuzal in gate three. Carlson, gate number four. So settling green lights on straight away. And a little bit anxious there by Palach and Screen makes the gate for the inside screen. Gets that pits corner first, all through the three in a bunch. They race then the back straight on lap number one. It's Screen from Palach. Kuzal in third and uh, Carlson going for Lauren on the edge. So Puzal goes much too wide on that uh, Coventry corner. And it's Screen and Screen's bike's got in the first race. And in fact, he falls on the top corner and the right at the back. Carlson almost crashed into Joe Screen. What disaster there for Joe Screen with heat one in his pocket. His bike goes on the second lap. Palach now then to Kuzel with Carlson in third and drama straight away in the opening heat of the Sunday to Under One Championship. And now it's uh, Kuzel with bike problems, drops back to third place. And it's Palach who leads on to lap number four. Carlson in second, Kuzel in third. Drama indeed, and Joe Screen on his knees and on the pits corner. He can't believe it, look. He had a horrendous journey to get through to this final, and he's robbed of a victory in heat number one as it's Palach who wins heat number one. Second is Kuzel, and Carlson coasting a sick bike home for a third place position. So the poles get one and two in the opening heat. An absolute disaster there for Joe Screen. Made a superb gate from the inside. His bike went on the second lap and Joe was on his knees and on the centre green and just couldn't believe his luck. And the winner of heat one in blue, Peter Palush. Winning time, 63.5. 63.5. Second in yellow and black was Jakob Carlson. And third in white, Robert Kudal. 63.5 the winning time. And so I've got on Joe screen coming down with the lead there in one. We've now got with us Victor Guidim from the Soviet Union. First of all, Victor, welcome to Coventry and the Under-21 Championship. Thanks. Was he able to go into the practice this afternoon? And if so, how did he find the track? Тренировался ли ты сегодня во второй половине дня? И если да, то как тебе показался показался трек? Тренировался такой. Рыхлый трек, тяжелый немножко. Yeah, well, uh, the track seemed to him a little bit hard uh, and a little bit. Uh, uh, it, it was really good, but uh, a little bit hard for him. He's got Viktor Kuznetsov working with him in the pits. Viktor has ridden over here in the past with the Russian tourists. Has he been giving him any advice about the English circuits? Ты работаешь вместе с Виктором Кузнецовым, точнее, Виктор Кузнецов работает вместе с тобой в качестве механика. А давал ли Виктор тебе какие-либо советы относительно езды на английских треках, поскольку Виктор в прошлом сам был гонщиком? We had a Russian tourist side over here early this season. Will they be coming back to England to race again next season? Do you know? В прошлом году здесь были наши гонщики, которые выступали в различных клубах. В этом году ожидается ли приезд нашей команды? Это все, это все решает Федерация Советского Союза. It's up to Motorcycle Federation of the Soviet Union to decide this question. Victor is not, not up to this, you know. Thank you very much for having me with him, and will you wish him the very, very best of luck for tonight? Спасибо, Витя, всего тебе хорошего. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So coming on the track then for heat number two, a riding in red. Ride at number five, Murat Puko of Stolgarso and Poland. Finished 
fourth in the semi-final with 11 points. On two minutes. Riding in blue, two number seven minutes. in the programme from Denmark. And obviously the man very much under pressure tonight because all eyes are going to be on this young man. Apart from riding in the Tommy Knudsen uh, testimonial, his first appearance on the Brandon track, it is Jakob Olsen. Finished eight for seven points in the semi-final. So interesting then after heat number one that uh, throws it all up in the air. If anybody thought Joe Screen was the odds on favourite, considering his vast experience of riding with Bellevue here at Coventry, that's uh, thrown it well and truly open. Heat number two then comes your way now, and uh, we witness Jakob Olsen in the blue helmet colour for Denmark. Marek Hucko uh, riding in red. Victor Gaidim from the Soviet Union in white. And Zolt Bazormany in yellow and black. Right, as as per program then, ladies and gentlemen, as we line up at the tapes for he number two. So Marak Hicho comes into gate the morning. It's uh, Jakob Olsen in gate number two. Victor Gaim in gate number three. And Zolst Bajamini in yellow and black. So settling for heat number two. Green lights on straight away. And it's Olsen making a good gate for the two game. Hushko gets into the uh, pit corner first. Hucko from uh, Olsen. We've lost the rider in yellow and black. The Hungarian hits the sea. Uh, Safe defence rather hard on that pit's corner. And it's still uh, Ushko who shows in from Olsen. Gedeem, the Russian, in third. As down the back straight they go once again. And it's uh, Ushko who's gone really well. Looks like he's got a few bright problems. Olsen moves through to hit the front on that uh, Coventry corner. It's um, Gaim in second. These two pulling a long way clear of Ushko who's very angry about his machine problem because he was well away at the front when his bike stopped so both rollers in the opening heat have stopped one at the front as Jakob Olsen now comes under pressure again from the Russian Gaim as they move on to lap number four Huko is still going around in third position just down the back straight they go once again Olsen just ahead of Gaim the Russian these two a long way clear of uh, Huko and Olsen coming under pressure they run the line oh, Jakob Olsen wins it second is um, Victor Gaidim, the Russian, and coming across the line in third place, Murak Puku, who of course had the lead when his bike went, so we've already had plenty of drama in these uh, opening heats. Of course, the riders had very limited practice, a quick practice for all the riders this afternoon, and uh, Puku, very, very disappointed indeed after that change in fellow thumping his handlebars, he went back up into the pits. But Green Day, been there for Jakob Olsen, winner of Heat number two, interest season, Joe, our machinery tonight. Well, there we are, heat two, just like old times, and Olsen the winner, the winner in blue, Jakob Olsen. Winning time, 63.3, 63.3. Second in white was Victor Guidim, and third in red, Marek Hucko. Jakob Olsen, your winner, 63.3, the winning time. On now to heat three, riding in red, it's Brian Anderson. Riding in blue, it's Adam Labetsky. In white, a lot of support here tonight for Jason Lyons. And in yellow and black, Jimmy Engman. He'll line up for heat three. I've never with me from Australia and the Glasgow Tigers, Jason Lyons. Jason, looking forward to tonight's Under-21 Championship. Yeah, should be a good night. Hopefully I can get my act together and get a place. It should be good. You must be a little bit disappointed that it was rained off yesterday because obviously it's going to cut down possibly your travelling support being raced on a Monday night. Yeah, I think all the supporters came down from Glasgow, but um, unfortunately it got rained off, so I assume they went home. I don't know for sure. I'd say a lot of them would have to work and stuff like that, so hopefully they will go back, get back down here, the ones that come, so a bit of a bummer, really. Your first appearance here at Coventry, how did practice go for you this afternoon? Um, yeah, I enjoyed it, actually. It was quite good. It's a nice shaped track. I come here and watched um, the National League Riders' Championship the other week, and it was quite good. I enjoyed myself. And you must be delighted the way things have gone for you and the Tigers so far this season. 
Yeah, we had a bit of a slow start, but everybody's fairly well going now, and we should finish second on the ladder, so it's better than last year and a lot better than the years before, so it's good. You've got Kenny McKenna spanner in for you tonight. He's ridden this Coventry trap before. Has he got given you any words of wisdom about the, tonight's meeting? Oh, he's helped me out a little bit. Um, you know, he's a good bloke, Kenny, and hopefully he can help me out through the night if I'm having any hassles and that, so we'll see what happens. Thanks a lot, Jason, and the best of luck tonight. Thanks very much. Thank you. Jakob Olsen winning time for heat number two. Heat number three, Brian Anderson from um, Denmark arrives in red. And rumour has it that Brian in fact will ride the sign for the Newcastle Diamonds after tonight's meeting. So Brian Anderson settles in gate number one. Adam Labizdiski is in gate number two. Jason Lyons in three and Jimmy Eggman in gate number four. to settle first for heat number three. Four riders there ready, green lights on straight away and it's Anderson mate in the good gate for the inside lines, gets out with him. Anderson on the inside lines, goes to line on the outside, Jimmy Ingman trying to get through on the inside line as it's Anderson then from uh, Ingman. Jason Lyons in third and going wide on that Cobney corner, coming under pressure from Levinsky, but Levinsky goes too wide on that Cobney corner, and still Brian Anderson coming under pressure from England. Lyons in close attendance, these three pulling away from uh, Levinsky as they race into that uh, Cobney corner once again. Still Brian Anderson with a good lead, and it's England coming under pressure from Lyons for that uh, third place position. England's gone wide again, coming off the pit score. Lyons trying to get inside him as they move into the Cobbney corner once again. Still Anderson from England. England's gone wide on that Cobbney corner. Lyons trying to get through on the inside line. But it's today and Brian Anderson with a clear advantage. He races down the back straight for the final time. England in uh, second. And Lyons gives it a big hand for around the outside of that Cobbney corner. He's gone much too wide as Brian Anderson wins it. Second is Jimmy England. And in third spot, Jason Lyons, that's the one, two, three, four, heat number three. Lots of good racing there in heat three. The winner in red, Brian Anderson. Brian Anderson's winning time was 62.4. 62.4. Second in yellow or black with Jimmy Eggman. And third in white, Jason Lyons. Brian Anderson, the winner, 62.4, the winning time. On heat four on the last four contestants in this FIM under 21 World Championship for 1991. Riding in red for Ipswich, it's Shane Parker. Riding in blue, Morton Anderson. In white, Edinburgh's Freddie Shot. And in yellow and black, Nicholas Klingberg. Your line up for heat four. So Brian Anderson's winning time almost a second quicker than anything else we've seen so far here tonight as the riders come out for heat number four. First rider onto the track from the Ipswich, which is an Australia, Shane Parker, road here first with Ipswich last Saturday. That must be a big advantage. He obviously knows exactly what this company circuit is like. In blue, again from Denmark, it's Morton Anderson. In white, another rider from Denmark. Rides for the Edinburgh Monarchs in their own division two, a Freddie Schott. And in yellow and black from Sweden, Nicholas Klingberg, of course, rides for the same team in Sweden, on the Ara, as Coventry's own Rick Miller rides for. So those are the four orders for heat number four. So 
waiting for Klingberg to settle in that number four gate. Four on is ready. Away and Parker's made a good gate for the inside. Freddie shot gets it with him. He shot shoulder to shoulder with Parker on that to Pitzcoin. The other one will give way and shot who gets took out by Parker and that allows Klingberg to come through into a second position. Has come to the complete one then. It's Parker coming under pressure from more than this in fact as he's moved through in the second spot. Klingberg at the back and chasing shot for that third position. As Parker then from Morton Anderson, shot in third, Klingberg at the back, and Klingberg trying to get round shot, coming off that to Cobney Corn, these two locks, shoulder, shoulder, shot, leaves Klingberg, nothing at all on that to starting straight, Klingberg again trying to get back round shot for the third position, there's all the time, Shane Parker's building that lead at the front, Morton Anderson in second, again Klingberg goes round the outside of the shot, on the Cobney Corner, cuts back for an inside path the shot, so on the third is Shane Parker, one of the favourites for tonight, spinning, and Klingberg hits the fence upon that to Pitt's corner. It's Parker into the Cobney corner for the final time, and through for three good points in heat number four. Second there is Morton Anderson, third spot, Freddie Schott, and obviously putting that experience of riding the Cobney track last Saturday is almost a heat leader with the Ipswich side, and I think is going to be one of the riders to watch in tonight's meeting. from Denmark there up on the uh, terraces also from Sweden as well uh, we welcome you uh, to Coventry as always and uh, over on the back straight we can see uh, one minute remaining just one minute on the back straight a Union Jack for Joe Screen So all these orders with quite a bit to do. Didn't do any, didn't do particularly well in their uh, opening rides. So Klingberg, Klingsberg, gate one, screen gate two, Hooko gate three, Lions gate number four. Settling for five, away in screen, slides out that number two gate in screen. Who has the advantage into the pits corner? Lions taking a line round the outside. Klingberg in third, Hooko at the back, and that's the order into that two. Coventry corner on Latnamore and screen then from Lyons. Klingsberg in third. Huku at the back and Klingsberg after Lyons in second place. Just down the back straight they go one second in screen already building himself a commanding lead. How costly might that first race engine failure prove to be? It's still Lyons in second again coming under pressure from Klingsberg for that second place position. There's Joe Screen a long way clear at the front lines again, slides a bit wide on that pit corner in turn. Klingsberg's gone wide as well, lost his third place to Hooker, but Klingsberg gets back round Hooker to move through into third. As Screen leads on to lap four. Lions in second, Klingsberg in third, Hooker at the back, and pretty well spread now as down the back straight goes Balbues. Joe Screen That's ever increasing that lead. Over there, goes goes Jason Lyons, so an impressive win comes up for line. Joe Screen in race line. number five. Second oh, is uh, Jason Lyons, third place, place Nicholas Klingberg, and uh, Murat Huku. So, for Joe Screen, now in now the engine in the position. first heat. Matters put right that time around. Well done to him, Joe Screen, your race winner. Heat five, and England's hope for himself back in with a chance to win him in blue, Joe Screen. Joe's winning time was 62.3, 62.3. Second in yellow and black was Jason Lyons. And third in red, Nicholas Klingberg. Joe Screen, your winner, 62.3, the winning time. On now to heat six, it's Morton Anderson in red. Brian Anderson rides in blue. Peter Palosh rides in white. Victor Guiding in yellow and black. You're out for heat six.
And Peter Palouche, of course, he actually won his opening ride along with Brian Anderson, Morton Anderson got a second, and Victor Gaudio also got a second place. So uh, for the riders, uh, the battle in race number six. So Morton Anderson, gate one, Brian Anderson, gate two, Peter Palouche, gate three, and Victor Guinim, gate number four. Again, no one wants to settle for, could be a very important race, number six. Hardy Marshall, Norman Keatley calling in to allow me to make for the two Danish riders. Not related, of course. We're we'll moving to line in one and two gates. So settling for six. Away, and it's uh, Morton Anderson who slides out an inside gate. Brian Anderson goes with him, goes wide. Palouche moves to the second. Anderson trying to get back round Palouche. These two shoulders, shoulder and back straight, and Brian Anderson gets round Palouche to move back through in the second. As Morton Anderson shows from Brian Anderson, it's a bit of Palouche in third. Victor guide him, the Russian, at the back. And that's shorter than that back straight on lap number two. Still Morton Anderson from Brian Anderson. These two pulling away from Palouche into the cop the corner they go once again Brian Anderson taking closer order on Morton Anderson now as they complete lap number two Morton Anderson rides with track forces Brian Anderson round the outside of that pits corner Palouche in third coming under pressure from Guinim for the odd point of the back as Brian Anderson again goes for line round the outside Morton Anderson coming off that cop the corner on to lap four Morton Anderson from Brian Anderson Palouche in third Guinim at the back and, and again Anderson, Mort, Brian Anderson, Anderson closing up on Morton Anderson, but still Morton Anderson and with the advantage on that corner for the time to the line. Morton Anderson, Morton Anderson wins it. Second, Brian Anderson. Third spot, Palouche. And that makes it interesting indeed because that gives those two five each a win and the second place each. And of course, obviously, Shane Park will be watching that one from the pit. He won his opening ride. And with Brian Anderson dropping a point there, it keeps it very interesting indeed. Seven Shane Parker and Blue Jakob Olsen in white. Adam Levitsky is in red. And Robert Kuzjal in, Robert Kuzjal in yellow and black. So coming into line for... Heat number seven, Lubinsky gate one, Parker gate two, Olsen gate three, Kuzel gate number four. So settling for seven. Away and Parker makes a good get Olsen gets out with it. Levinsky trying to get through on the inside. Kujan goes barging through on the inside and Olsen back drops back from second to last as Parker leads into that Cobbney corner on that number one. Olsen trying to get back inside. Kujan 
as it's Parker who shows in for Lubinsky. Kuzel and Olsen battling it out for third and fourth. And into that pitch corner once again. Kuzel goes wide again. Lubinsky gets tremendous lift. Kuzel's gone down one in third spot. Lubinsky got lift coming off that pitch corner. Olsen trying to battle his way back through into second spot is Shane Parker. A long way here at the front is Lubinsky in second. Olsen in third. Lubinsky goes wide on that to pitch corner. Olsen trying to cut back for an inside pass but still back in third. As Parker leads now uh, on to um, lap number four. Levinsky in the second, Olsen in third. And this uh, Kujal's almost in the lap by Parker. So got four lot, one on lap, one on lap three, and one on lap number four. Uh, as the last lap flag goes out for uh, Kujal. The winning flag there for Shane Parker. Second is Levinsky. Third spot lap of Olsen and terrific action there on that pitch corner on the opening lap. I thought there would have been some confusion over the flags. I think Shane Parker's not too sure. He's going to turn back to the pitch now as uh, Kujal comes round to complete four laps. But to win there for um, Shane Parker, the other man to beat. Second is Adam Levinsky. Third spot, Jakob Olsen. Consistent tonight and pretty quick as well. Number 62 7 there in heat 7, heat 8. Joachim Carlson rides in red. Zolst. Zolst. Bazormany is in blue. Jimmy Eggman in white, but he's shot in yellow and black. Settle for race number eight. Joachim Carson, second place, first time out, and Jimmy Engman got the second place as well. As they finally settle for race number eight. Away, and Carson makes a good gate from the inside, and Freddie shots out with him as well. Engman shot goes 2 1. That pitch can almost catch the safe defence on that pitch when Jimmy Engman moves through in the second. Shock gets back round the uh, Hungarian one to retake the third. It's going to complete lap number one. It's Joachim Carlson and from Jimmy Engman. Shock in third. Bozinomini at the back is down the back straight. They go once again. And Joachim Carlson building himself a good lead over Jimmy Engman. Again, shot's gone wide on that uh, Cobney corner. Tremendous lift there for Carlson as he leads into the pits corner once again. Engman in second. And coming under pressure of that second place from Freddie Shot. Shot getting ever close as they race into that Coventry corner once again. Still Carlson on to lap number four. England goes wide coming up that Coventry corner. Freddie Shot right in the action with him for second and third position. As the end of that straight once again goes uh, Carlson. Shots right there with England. England again was too wide coming off that pit screen. What we do on the Coventry corner? He's led towards the fence again. A race to line. Freddie Shot straightens up the quicker and Freddie Shot gets the second place. And Jimmy England. Going much too wide on both the pitch corner and the Coventry corner. Loses to second place on the race into the line. So win there for Joachim Carlson. Keeps him very much in contention. Second, Freddie Shot. Third spot, Jimmy England. Result of race number eight. Now they've been revealed off the eight. They win it in red, Joachim Carlson. 
Wing time was 62.9, 62.9. Second in yellow black, a good finish at the last turn there, Freddie Shutt. And third in white, Jimmy Engman. Jacob Carlson's winning time at 62.9. Well, they've all had two rides, let's run down the individual score chart with you. Freddie Schott's going to have gate number two, Joe Screen, already at the gate in gate three. And Adam Levinsky will have two minutes to the line four. Two uh, minutes. Time now been allowed for Freddie Schott. He's got two minutes to come into line for race nine. So Joe Screen obviously out to win this one. He's got to be hoping that somebody's going to beat Shane Parker along the line before they uh, before they clash. Otherwise, those three points that Joe lost and heat them all and could cost him very dear indeed. So Victor Guidium gate them all. To the top of Freddie Shot Gaiden, gate two. Joe Screen, Joe Screen gate three. Adam and Adam Levinsky the, gate and number four. The, uh, Right up on the Ukraine, off gate number one in the red helmet gallop. And watch for him, Freddie Shaw, off gate number two in blue, Joe Screen. Off gate number three, and from the outside, Adam Levinsky. There's Lider, here we go. Settling for nine then. Green lights on, and Screen again, quickly out from the three gate. Levinsky's out with him, and Screen comes under pressure, and a terrific pile up on that pitch corner, as the rider in blue, Freddie Shaw, went roaring underneath. Screen and uh, Levinsky it is. Screen was left with nowhere to go. Neither was Levinsky. And a fair bit of damage to bikes, riders and machines up on that first corner. Shot went to a gap on the inside. Took everybody out. He was on the inside of Screen and Levinsky. Shot in fact came from absolutely nowhere because Screen had made a good gate. The shot went roaring inside. The Danish referee rules a restart with all four. Let's hope they are OK. And Levinsky and Screen on the outside of that. Uh, I think it's going to be a while before we uh, get racing back. A, because of damage to machines and riders, and B, because of the safety fence. Glad to say Joe Screen is up on his feet and walking away there talking to England manager Colin Pollock just de described exactly what happened then. He must have wondered what hit him there with the Joe Screen as he was brought down. Levinsky still uh, down and being attended to by the doctor. The point was asked was uh, first corner again there for Joe Screen. So as we saw Joe Screen coming off and Adam Levinsky there uh, with Arm and leg injuries being taken away by the uh, members of the St John Ambulance. Back to the uh, doctor's examination room where they'll undergo the full medical treatment. And hopefully a little later on I'll be able to keep you posted on his progress with Joe Screen on his feet. And uh, well, we wish the young boy we uh, stretch it off once in life. We'd never like to see him straight down. We wish him well.
So dining in gate one, shot gate two, screen gate three, Rampala, gate number four. Settling for restart of nine. Away in screen again, hasn't made the best of start. His shot who gets to that corner first screen, trying to barge away through room through the second. Comes alongside shot, going to the back straight and superb. Right there by Joe Screen, sees him get round Freddie's shot. And it's Screen who shows in from shot, looks back to see where shot is. I think Screen not too happy about the treatment of receiving that one off. He's looking to see where his shot is all the time. The screen leads in the back straight once again. The shot in second, IDM in third, Rampala at the back. That's coming off the Cotton Decor and three complete lap number two. It's still a screen, ever increasing lead over shot. The Russian Guidium in third. Rampala at the back as down the back straight they go once again. And Freddie shot now the 20 yard with the, Joe Stream with the 20 yard cushion over Freddie shot as they move on to lap number four. Guidium in third. Rampala at the back but equal distance between them. Just down the back straight they go for the final time. Really spread now in race number nine another super victory this time coming through for the back four Joe Screen. Joe Screen wins it. Second is Freddie Shot. Third spot Victor Guidium and just rewards there for the super victory from the back in the restart of race number nine for Bellevue's Joe Screen. And that is now um, two impressive wins and a cruel engine failure. Cheer for Joe Screen, he's back into the pits, his second win of the night. 8-9, the winner in white, Joe Screen. Joe's winning time was 62.4, 62.4. Second in blue was Freddy Shutt. And third in red, Victor Guiding. Joe Screen, your winner, 62.4, the winning time. time there for Joe Screen. 62-4 is consistently the quickest run there this Brandon track tonight. Heat 10, Jimmy Ingman rides in red. Murat Puku in blue. Unbeaten Shane Parker in white. Peter Philip Palach in yellow and black. So as they come into line, Jimmy Ingman, gate one. Murat Puku Gate number two, Shane Parker on beating gate three, Peter Tolash, gate number four. Settling for heat 10, England, Huku, Parker, Palouche. Green lights on. Away, and England makes a good game. And Parker, in fact, is last away and gets some rough treatment on that first corner. It was England who shows from Huku. Parker in third. Huku's gone wide on that back. Trying to get through in a second, gets this back in, and uh, Ingman, who was at the front, falls on the comfy corner, and that spread the riders all over the circuit. Leaves a clear now for Shane Parker. It's Parker then from Huku. Palouche in third, and Palouche chasing Huku for that second place position, as Ingman, who had the race in his pocket on that first lap, crashed on that to Cobney Coins, back in the action again, but almost a complete circuit behind, that's a little bit of luck there for Shane Parker, who's in third place when that incident happened, with Parker racing away to that back straight, Hooker in second, Palouche in third, and that's the order now, moving on to lap number four, so Parker from Hooker. Palouche in third, Huku not too far behind Parker, they make their way to that back straight once again. We're looking pretty good now for Shane Parker, he's got a quarter of a circuit to go, who make it three rides and three winning rides. Uh, Shane Parker wins it, second, Mirak Huku, and in third spot, Peter Palouche. So drama on that first corner, 
and Jimmy Ingman was well away and he slid down right in front of all the Rodders. He almost to get past him at that particular time. Parker was in third spot by the time the Rodders had sorted themselves out. He raced through for another very important win. short one in view of the inclement weather conditions it will be a short interval tonight but pushing on with this FIM under 21 world championship for 1991 all set now for heat 11 into line for race 11 results Bosnarmini is in red Jason Lyons in blue Robert Kuzel in white Morton Anderson in yellow and black Morton Anderson third in the semi-final well, it's the same club in Denmark as a world champion, Jeno Pedersen, and is a reigning Nordic under-21 champion. to settle for race number 11. Being held away and it's uh, Lozon who makes a good game but Lyon plays into that uh, pits corner. Anderson looking at Lyon right on the outside, gets round Lyons and it's Anderson who shows in from Lyons with uh, Kujal in third. As they come to complete lap number one then, more Anderson with the advantage over Jason Lyons. Robert Kujal in third position with the Hungarian again at the back as they make their way in the back straight once again and Morton Anderson got five points from his opening two building himself a good lead now over Jason Lyons they complete lap number two Kuzel still in third in the back straight they go once again so Morton Anderson keeping the Danish flag flying again in this one as Kuzel comes into pressure for his third place position there from um, Lozomini as it's Anderson on to lap number four, Lyons in second, these two a long way clear of Cruzel, who again comes under pressure from beyond the me on that uh, inside of that uh, pits corner, but back to Liddy's again we go, as it's uh, a winning ride coming up for Morton Anderson, that makes it eight points from three starts, second there uh, is Jason Lyons, and Robert Cruzel just hangs on to third, so with the Andersons getting amongst the points, that engine failure to Joe Screen means he's going to be very hard pressed to get in the top three at the present moment. So a fourth win there for Morton Anderson keeps him in second place at the moment. And the official result of Heat 11, the winner in yellow and black, Morton Anderson. What a time, 63.3, 63.3 for Morton Anderson. Second in blue was Jason Lyons. And third in a close finish in white, Robert Cushdown. 63.3 the winner, Morton. The time, Morton Anderson, your winner. On now to heat 12. Right, St. Colors, according to the program, last heat before a short interval. Race number 12, the interval heat. Nicholas Klingberg in red. Joachim Carlsen, last year's Swedish junior champion, on the five-point mark, he is in blue. Brian Anderson, also on the five-point mark, is in white, so a win for either of them two would take the equal second with Morten Anderson at the interval. And Jakob Olsen is in uh, yellow and black. And Jakob, of course, with being moved up a place, is also on the five-point mark. So if he too were to win this race in the 12, he would be uh, joint second at the interval. So everything to go for for the riders in race number 12. So 
enjoying for the interval heat. Kling Bear Gate 1, Carlson 2, Anderson 3, Olsen Gate number 4. for Bron Anderson to move into line in that three gate. So four riders ready for heat 12. Away and it's a good start there by Jakob Carlson and Colin lifts it alarmingly and again problems on the first corner as Joachim Carlson made a tremendous gate but found tremendous drive on that pitch corner. Down he went. And the rivalry well, right is Bron Anderson in the in right in blue is excluded. The rider in blue is excluded. Joachim Carlson pays the penalty and that's to knock his chance about because he was very much in contention on the five-point mark, but exclusion there in heat number 12 is ruining his chances. Then Nicholas Klingberg, gate one, no rider, gate two, Brian Anderson, gate three, Jakob Olsen, gate number four. Brian Anderson right across there with Jakob Olsen, the three and four gates, they're very close together indeed. Green lights back on again, away Anderson makes a good gate from the inside, but Klingberg makes a better gate from the inside line, Anderson nicely around the edge of Klingberg, and it's Anderson who shows some Klingberg, Olsen looking for their line around the edge of Klingberg as well, and sets about chasing one Anderson on that to Cobbley corner, it's Anderson for Olsen, Klingberg in third, so a Danish 1-2 at the moment, as Anderson leads in the back straight on lap number two, Olsen in second, these two pulling away from uh, Klingberg, an important race this for Brian Anderson, a winning ride here, keep moving in to second place, of course, Jakob Olsen also needs the points, as Anderson around the outside, Olsen looking for the line for me, as Anderson's gone really wide on that to pit squad, Jakob Olsen right back there with him now, good scrap between the two Danes, and Olsen goes to the line around the outside of that, Cobney corner cuts back for an inside pass, as Anderson for Olsen, Olsen, Linsberg in third, Olsen again, goes to the line right around the outside of that pit squad, and moves it back to the inside line, but still Anderson, five, six yards clear of Olsen, gives that it around the outside, of the Cobbley corner, Brian Anderson gets the three important points. Second, Jakob Olsen. Third spot, it's um, Nicholas Klinberg. So Brian Anderson now has eight points and is in second place overall at the interval stage of this 1991 Under-21 Championship. And the official results of the four heat, the winner in white, Brian Anderson. Brian Anderson's winning time, 63.3, 63.3. Second in yellow and black was Jakob Olsen. And third in red, Nicholas Klingberg. 63.3 the winning time, the winner, Brian Anderson. Well, I say that's a short interval now, but we'll run down the individual score chart with you. Don't forget all the riders have had three rides. Joe Green has six points. Peter Palosh has five. Robert Kuzdal has three. Jakob Carlson has five. Ali Hucko has three. Peter Geigen three. Jakob Olsen seven. Jolt Bojemeni still to score. Jason Lyons has five. Ryan Anderson has eight. Adam Babetsky no score. Jimmy Eggman three. Nicholas Klinberg two. Walter Anderson has eight. Shane Parker still leading the field with nine. Freddie Shirt, five. Okay, for a part of the one ride, no points. Well, don't forget the videos of today's meeting will be available from JSD Videos, who film regularly here at Coventry Stadium. And those of you who have bought their videos will know that they're excellent quality, and details can be found on the inside of the front cover of today's match programme. So if you want a video of today's meeting, I've now got with me the rider who's just won Heat 12, Brian Anderson. Brian, things going very well for you at the moment. Yeah, I think I go pretty well, uh, but there's still two more heats uh, that has to, has to be done, so there's a long way 
You're in second place at the moment, just one point behind Shane Parker, and you've yet to race Shane Parker. Uh, Shane is a pretty good starter, uh, so uh, I don't know if I can take him in the start to the gate, so I can handle him. Rather nasty instant on the first corner, and you're almost down with um, the Swedish rider. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, got a lift on his uh, front wheels, and I have to pull it down so uh, <laughs> before the fence, you know. Rumour has it in England that you're going to sign for Newcastle and ride in Division 2, is that correct in England? Yeah, I talk uh, with Newcastle and uh, I'm going to, to, to see the papers, uh, just, uh, the contract tonight and uh, if it's good, uh, then I'll sign, of course. How are you liking this Coventry circuit tonight? Uh, that's, uh, the public is uh, very beautiful. They are with uh, the, any rider who, who's going pretty well, so uh, they are wonderful. Thanks a lot, Brian, and congratulations on your second place at the interval. Thank you. Thank you. I've now got with me a rider who must be absolutely heartbroken at the moment, Joe. Joe, ex what exactly happened in that first race? Well, the first one, uh, the engine seized up, because uh, it's a brand new engine, and uh, I wanted to do practice to start with, just to do four laps on it, and. Uh, I did like three, three laps, did I? Two laps. Two laps and it seized up, so uh, I don't know, that's how we go, isn't it? It's racing. It's leaving you with an awful lot to do because Shane's on beat and he's got the drop point somewhere and, and that not only have you got to win, he's actually now got a drop point. Well, he, see how we go, really. I'm just going to go out there and do my best now and uh, try and get wins if I can. If I can't, well, I've tried my best. Looking at the times, you are consistently the quickest rider here tonight. And if you'd have kept going in that first race, you could have well been under 62 seconds. Well, this track was good, and uh, I was just going for it. That was the best, like, starts I've made probably all the whole season. I've made, like, the last start I made, the last race, I wasn't a very good start, but, like, the other three starts I think I made were really good, you know. Thanks for having a with us, Joe. I know, I know you must be bitterly disappointed, but let's hope you can pick it up in the closing two rides. Yeah, I hope so. I'll just do my best. Thanks a lot, Joe. First race up the interval should be very interesting indeed. Look at most on the seven point mark rides in red. Jimmy Ingman in blue. Morton Anderson on the eight point mark in white. And Joe Screen on the six point mark in yellow and black. in gate one, Jimmy Eng England in gate number two, in three Morton Anderson and in four Joe Screen. Settling for race 13, away and Screen has made a bad gate in the four gate, it's all in blue, Jimmy England has the advantage into that corner and a tangle up again on the first corner as Morton Anderson plows into uh, Jimmy Engman there on that uh, Fitz corner. What's the Danish referee going to do about sorting that one out? Again, incidents on the first corner. Hey, we would like all four riders to restart in heat 13. All four riders back to the line, please, for heat 13. News on Adam Lubinsky, it is a suspected broken femur for the Polish rider, so that's very, very bad news indeed. Fine. 
So riders back into line for the restart of race 13. A vital race for three of these riders. Olsen, Anderson, Screen still very much in contention. So Olsen one, Engman Gate two, Anderson three, Screen on gate number four. Again, hectic action on that uh, first corner. So waiting for uh, Morton Anderson to settle again. Away, and again it's Jimmy England making a good gate, and Olsen trying to buy saw on the inside. Anderson looking for the line round there, as Anderson gets around Olsen and screen goes roaring through in the second. Gets ahead of Olsen, Olsen coming back round screen, screen retakes a second as well, work on after Morton Anderson now. And this Anderson under pressure from screen, they still pulling away from Jimmy Engman with Jacob of Olsen. Now find himself with the back of the race in the back straight once again. It's uh, Anderson under pressure from screen, Anderson on the inside screen, going for line round the outside of that to Cobden. He kind of cuts back for an inside pass. It's Anderson, mid-track screen, goes for the outside line, cuts back for the inside on that to back straight. He's alongside Anderson now, with Anderson still a bike ahead of him on that Cobden corner. Anderson again rides mid-track screen, doesn't quite know where they go. He goes to line round the outside of Morton. Anderson a bike clear on to lap number four. Anderson from three, Anderson's on wide screen trying to get through on the inside line, gets along to Anderson, tremendous race between these two as Anderson on the, in the middle of the track and Screen's not going to get to him for that position, tremendous win there for Morton Anderson, second Joe Screen, third spot is um, Jimmy Ingman and surely now with a drop point there and Joe Screen the first to congratulate to Morton Anderson, that was a superb ride there by Morton Anderson because Joe Screen tried everything he knew but uh, the Danish rider picks up a very important win there in race number 13. Good win for Morton Anderson. Second is um, Joe Screen. Third spot, Jimmy Hangman. And uh, superb ride there by Morton Anderson in race number 13. Well, some fine racing to set the second half of tonight's meeting underway. The winner of heat 13 in white, Morton Anderson. More than winning time, 62.9, 62.9. Second in yellow and black, battling all the way there, Joe Screen. And third in blue, Jimmy Engman, 62.9. And the winner's time, the winner, Morton Anderson. On now to heat 14. One alteration to heat 14, riding in yellow and black, Dean Barker. Dean Barker rides in yellow and black for heat 14. Heat 14 and uh, Peter Flash, Nicholas Klingberg, Zolt Bazomini, and Dean Barker now comes in to replace Adam Lebetsky, as Peter Morris told you, and Dean Barker, of course, champing in the bit, in the bits all night, I can tell you that, and uh, desperately trying to keep himself warm and keep his engines warm as well, so he... He manages to get his rise. Denied his place, of course, through a visa problem and entering Russia for the qualifying rounds. And uh, as you may or may not have seen, he had to run off with Joe Screen for tonight's so England of four, so 14. Palash gate one, Klingsberg two, was on the me, tonight. gate three, Barker gate number four. And this Barker makes a good gate from the four gapers. Klingsberg in fact the leads into that pit's going to pull trying to get to on the inside but gets called out there and Barker back find himself at the back at the moment. As it's um, the wide in blue, Nicholas Klingsberg who has the advantage completing lap number one. He's on the me in second, he's on the me locks it up right in front of Barker on that pit's going to bark has now moved his way through in the third and gets round was on the me to move through in the second. As it's still Klinsberg then from Barker, was on a mean third. Polish at the back, goes into the pitch corner once again. And Klinsberg building himself a good lead over Barker, but was on a me. Again a bit slow on that to pitch corner. Polish is right there with him again as they come to com complete lap number three. Still Klinsberg from Barker. Pazonomy in third, Palouche again going for line around the edge of Pazonomy on that pitch corner, but Palouche has gone far too wide upon that pitch corner, Pazonomy hangs on to his third place, so it's a win ride for Nicholas Klingsberg, second is Dean Barker, third spot, Zorz Pazonomy, and first winning ride there for uh, Nicholas Klingsberg in race number 14. 
14 and the winner in blue, Nicholas Klingberg. This is winning time was 63.3, 63.3. Second in yellow and black was the reserve rider, Dean Barker. And third in white, Dolph Bojemeni. 63.3 the winning time, Nicholas Klingberg the winner. Takes us on to heat 15, riders and colours according to programme. Then Freddie shot in red. Robert Cruzel in blue. Brian Anderson needs to win the keeping contention is in white. Marek Puku in yellow and black. A win for Brian Anderson here. We're moving on to 11, the same as Morton Anderson in the share of second place with just one rod each to go. So Freddie Shock, gate one, Robert Cousel, gate two, Brian Anderson, gate three, and Marek Puku, gate number four. So we wait for the riders in three and four gate, Anderson and Huku to settle for the vital important race, this race 15. Gets round Kuzel, it's Anderson, the leads in the back straight on lap number one. It's uh, Huku in the second place, lost his helmet, come on, I think it's Huku as they uh, come on complete lap number one. Anderson then from Huku, it's shot in third. Kuzel and the back, it's down the back straight, they go for the second time. Brian Anderson already throwing himself at the line and leader of Murat Huku. And then surely now completing lap number two. Huku now being closed down by a pretty shot for that second place position. There's Anderson then from Huku, shot in third. Cazelle at the back. That's into the Coventry corner once again. Huku's got a few problems goes from the inside of the track to the outside. That, that's pretty shot through in a second. That could have been dangerous to get him in. Right across from the inside to the outside. But it's a Danish side again to the four as Brian Anderson leads to the back straight for the final time. Shot in second. And the Kuzel coasting round the third, Brian Anderson wins it. Second, Freddie Shot uh, coming through to third place is Robert Kuzel. So in the Danes, very much the four equal second at the moment behind Australia's Shane Parker. Eight fifteen, doing his chances of power good. The winner in white, Brian Anderson. Brian's winning time, 63.3, 63.3. Second in red was Freddie Shot. And third in blue, Robert Kushdahl. So I've got there on Mount Coco. Two points in the bag. 63.3 the winning time. Brian Anderson, your winner. Heat 16 then building up, which uh, should be a glorious ride indeed. We know that uh, on the back straight there, just coming round to the tapes is Jason Lyons. So we wish Jason lots of luck. The Russian rider Victor Gaidim in the blue, Joachim Carlson in white, and unbeaten at present, Shane Parker in yellow and black. So, we shall watch with interest the progress of heat number 16, that's next up. It's Joachim Carlson, very much in contention until he got excluded in his third round, he was on five points up to that race. So, Lyons on one, Gudiem on two, Carlson three, Parker on four. 
Three lines, Simon Parker makes a good gate for the four gate, but it's larger goes Boyd, and down goes Parker in a big heap again. Horrendous action upon that first corner, and that looks nasty for Shane Parker at the moment. And also the rod in blue, Victor Gudian, the Russian rider, but Parker looked to be in a lot of trouble as he rolled over towards the uh, pits fence. Again, uh, we start with all four riders, all four riders, and let's hope that Shane Parker is fit to take part in the rerun. Shane Parker. All eligible for the rerun, we start with all four. So referee rolls a restart with all four, the Russian rider limping away, but everybody looks at Sean Parker as your meeting lead at the moment again. Horrendous action on that first corner. One of these uh, under 21 rolling prepared to give an inch on that first corner. And uh, really the safe defence has took a little bit of a button in this evening's meeting. Sean Parker still down on the track at the moment. into line four, heat 16, restart. Jason Lyons red, Victor Guinan in blue, Yakim Carlson in white, Shane Parker unbeaten in yellow and black. So settling for the restart of 16, away and Parker again has made a good game for the Russian. Gets the corner first and Lyons in the axe as well. Lyons show Parker rolls to inside Gideon to get in behind teammate Lyons and Gadim trying to get back round Parker. We've got a race on our hands now as Gadim's cruising on round the edge. That cob in the corner gets round Parker, sets about chasing Lyons. Parker trying to get inside Gadim as Lyons in from Gadim. Parker in third and this is going to throw it wide open but Gadim goes too wide on that pitch corner. Parker moves back through in the second as Lyons in from Parker. Gadim in third. It's um, Carlson at the back. And into the pits corner once again and Jason Lyons still shows him and Shane Parker could do him again trying to get back at Parker as down the back straight they go for the third time and not too much Aussie comradeship at the moment as one Aussie leads another and I think Parker slowing up there in second and Gideon trying to get round the outside Parker on that to pits corner screams it on and Parker leads Gideon like it all what a great ride by the Russian there because Parker took him right out and the Russian went through an impossible gap as Jason Lyon wins it second a tremendous ride there by the Russian rider Victor Gideon because Shane Parker took him wider and wider and wider and really left him nothing at all there and Parker is furious at the moment he hurdles back up into the pits very unhappy indeed but my word if the Russian had have come down there Parker surely would have been excluded and that would have been his chances going into a win there for Jason Lyons that's probably why Shane Parker's not too happy about that he's been beaten by another Aussie and second what a great ride there by Victor Gaudiam because the gap was not there at all on the outside. He kept it screwed on and went through an impossible gap. Jason Lyon. Jason's winning time was 63.7. 63.7. Second in blue, Victor Guidin. And third in yellow and black, Shane Parker. 63.7, the winning time, the winner in lead, Jason Lyons. Well, that he throws the meeting wide open, and we'll run down these scores for you. So the Riders has now had four rides. Joe Screen has eight points. Peter Parrish has five. Robert Cushdale has four. Jakob Carlson has five. Marek Hucko is on three. Victor Guardian has five. Jakob Olsen has seven. Zolt Moshemeni has one. Jason Lyons, eight. Brian Anderson has eleven. Adam Lebetsky, no score. Jimmy Nickman has four points. Nicholas Klinkberg has five. Morton Anderson has 11. Shane Parker is on 10. Ray Shutt has 7. 
There we go. We all know what they've got to do with one line to go. We start with an interesting heat 70. It's Joe Screen in red. Sean Bothermany in blue. Shane Parker lines again, this time in white. And Brian Anderson in yellow and black. More than interesting heat 17. see it, a win here for Brian Anderson will assure him at least a runoff for first position. So once again the Danish riders to the fore. And of course uh, Mort Anderson also 11, Shane Parker drops down to 10 and Joe Screen has gone 8. And Jason Leisner of course has gone 8 with his winning line there in that dramatic race 16. Certainly with everything is happening on that first corner tonight, so it, uh, it's still a long way to go, but um, once again the Danes to the fore, as they have been throughout this 91 season. So, Joe Screen, gate one, Zolz was in the gate two. Shane Parker, gate three, Brian Anderson looking for a win at gate number four. So we wait for Shane Parker to settle in that three gate four, a crucial race, 17. Green lights on and Parker absolutely flying. Parker's bike has gone. He made the best start and he went 10 yards and the bike going. It leaves it clear now for Brian Anderson with screen in second and was on me in third. So disaster strike Shane Parker in his fourth and fifth rides. And Brian Anderson now with a good lead over Joe Screen was on me in third. As a dejected Shane Parker sits on the pits uh, corner, he can't believe it as Brian Anderson leads into that uh, Coventry corner on lap number two, screen in second and screen's not going to get to Anderson from that position, was on the knee in third as into the pits corner, they go once again, screen getting a bit closer to Anderson, Anderson again pulls away on the straight, but I don't think screen's finishing, he's closing the gap all the time as Anderson then from screen, was on the knee a long way down in third, on to lap number four and screen definitely pegging back the great Anderson and there were some sparks came from either know it's his steel shoe or his engine of Anderson there as he completed lap number three screen. A couple of bikes behind him there as he ruins that Coventry corner for the full time. But Anderson's got the speed around the outside. Brian Anderson wins it. Second, Joe Screen. It means Brian Anderson is assured of at least a run off the first. He's got 14 points as Shane Parker goes back into the pits. I don't think he can believe it. At the end of it, he was unbeaten with nine and he's only picked up one from his next two. He made the best gate, he flew out of the gate, went 10 yards, and the bike just completely gave up the ghost. Well, there is in there in heat 17, and tough luck there on Shane Parker. The winner of heat 17, in yellow and black, Brian Anderson. Brian Anderson's winning time was 62.9, 62.9. Second in red was Joe Screen, and third in blue, Zolt Bojemeni. Brian the winner, 62.9 is winning time. Those four riders complete their rides. Riding at number one, Joe Screen finishes off 10 points. Riding at number eight, Zolt Bojemeni finishes on two. Riding at number 10, Brian Anderson, the front runner, finishes with 14 points. And riding at number 15, Shane Parker finishes with 10. On now to heat 18. Give us a cheer in red, Jason Lyon. Riding in blue, Peter Palush. In white, is Jacob Olsen. And in yellow and black, Freddie Shutt. You line up for heat 18. Jason Lyon's in a win here. We move him into third place overall, large in red. Peter Palush is in blue. Jacob Olsen in white. Freddie shot in yellow and black. So Jason Lyons is nervous, took any notice of all the evening. According to me, if he wins this race, he is definitely third with 11 points. So uh, all to go for in race number 18.
So no wonder Jason Lyons wouldn't give an inch to Shane Parker when they met in uh, his heat 16. He knew very well that a win would keep him very much in contention. So he's out in gate one. Peter Palash in two. Jakob Olsen three. Freddy shot four. Away and it's uh, Freddy shot making a good gate there. He's up a line sweeps inside him. And it's Glasgow versus Edin Murza racing the back straight on lap number one. It's Lyons who shows them the shot. Jakob Olsen trying to get inside the shot on that Cobney corner. Gets inside shot. The move for the second shot. Getting back when Olsen. Olsen comes again to retake the second. There's Lyons and from Jakob Olsen. Olsen getting close to the Lyons. They race. Then that back straight once again. Shot in third. Peter Palach getting told off for the back. There's still Jason Lyons. The advantage now coming on to lap number three. Jakob Olsen second. Freddy shot in third. Palach getting told off for the back. So... Jason Lyons on course for three important points in this race number 18 into the Cottonley corner for the third time. Jakob Olsen some ten yards behind him. Freddie Chuck looks at him struggling with a sick motor in third. Then the back straight they go once again. Still the order very much the same. And a winning rod in 16. Looks like a winning rod in 18 is going to move Jason Lyons in the third place position as Jason Lyons wins it. Second Jakob Olsen. Third spot, it's Freddy Shot, and according to me, that assures Jason Lyons of third place in the meeting. Of course, for Jason Lyons, and a good contingent of Glasgow fans have stayed overnight to watch him, and they must be pleased with his winning ride there in race number 17. Trying to get through in on that uh, pitch corner. First down from uh, Klingberg. England in third. England trying to get inside uh, Klingberg. As they come on to complete lap number one. It's first down the surprise. He loses Army as He leads into that pitch corner. England gets inside for second, but uh, Klingberg gets back past England. Sector bank chasing Kuzdal uh, as he race into that Cobbley corner once again. Kuzdal around the outside. It's Klingberg in second. England in third, Gadeem at the back, and all four bunching up there as a race that back straight once again, once again, Kuzdal's gone much too wide, and Klingberg hits the front, and England follows him through, terrific action on that Cobbley corner, as Klingberg shows in from England, Kuzdal dropped the third, now dropped right back to the back as a Russian gets inside him as well, so uh, Kuzdal has gone from first to last, as it's Klingberg who leads into the Cobbley corner for the final time and through for the good win coming right through to the back. Nicholas Klingberg wins it. Second, Jimmy Engman. Third spot, Victor Gediem and Robert Kuzdal who led the race the most of the laps comes in last in race 19. Well, the final race there in heat 19, the winner in white, Nicholas Klingberg. Nicholas's winning time was 64.4, 64.4. Second in blue is Jimmy Ingman, and third in yellow black from Russia, Victor Guidin. 64.4 the winning time. Those four riders have finished their lives, riding at number three, Robert Kushdal finishes with four. 
Riding at number 12, but Jimmy Engman finishes with six. Riding at number 13, Nicholas Klingberg finishes with eight. Riding at number six, Victor Guardian finishes with six. On now to heat 20. So coming into line for race number 20. Paul Anderson needs to win this to go into runoff with um, Brian Anderson. But he shouldn't have too many problems looking at the other scorers of the riders in this uh, heat. So Huku on gate one, Anderson two, Rampala three. Carlson, gate number four. Green lights on away. Anderson hasn't made the best of gates. It's from Paul. In fact, he makes the corner first. Anderson goes barging through on the inside line. It's Mark Anderson who shows in from Rampala. Carlson in third with Huku at the back. And that sort of can put him lap number one. Morton Anderson for the advantage over Rampala. So Carlson in third. Carlson trying to get round Rampala coming off that pitch corner. Huku. Getting towed off of the back is into the comedy corner. They go once again. Anderson slowly but surely building himself a good lead over Rampala again. Comes in the pressure from Carlson for that second place position. Hugo getting towed off of the back. Morton Anderson leads in that back straight once again. Again, the Carlson getting close to Rampala for that second on that comedy corner. On to lap four. Morton Anderson, well played of Rampala. Uh, we it's go then, Carlson in Anderson. third, these three a long way clear yeah, for Murak Haku, really into the Cottonley corner for the final right. time, so Morton Anderson won himself, run off with Brian Anderson, forwards under 21 title, Morton Anderson wins it, second is um, Yazik Rampala, a good reserve ride there in second place, first spot goes to Joachim Carlson. The stadium this evening, well done to Morton Anderson, we'll go quickly over to Peter Morris in the box. All four, in fact, come through for La Hamone and uh, Morton Anderson's fan club is who celebrate this time. They await the runoff. Remember, Morton beat Brian in heat number six. So the first Get ever under-21 champion was Danish, that was off Brisk of course, and it looks like another well, Dane is going to take it uh, again in 1991. So Brian Anderson Red, we're having a chat there with Morton Anderson, sorting out uh, what gates they're going to have. So Morton beat Brian in race number six. At the end of the meeting. So here we go then. The so big it looks if Brian's going to have world. gate two and Morton's going to have gate number four. Brian so that's where we get another Danish clean sweep. Taz individual World Team Cup well, now the under right, 21. The Division Two Riders Championship as well, let's not forget. 
and they're just going to follow them over the gates uh, at the moment. Going on. And Brian Anderson saying, "I want." I think they have the choice of either one or one or two, and if they have one. Cameras of TV2 from Denmark to record that. So uh, Brian Anderson determined that he wants his uh, position to go from. Oh. Point to what he takes, the other rider has three or four, but there's a little bit of a problem at the gate at the moment. As Brian Anderson seems determined to settle in the two gate, which means that more Anderson has got to take gate number four. Well, Starting Marshall. Finally calls them down the line. So they've been called up into line, and uh, at the moment it's Brian Anderson to Mort. Anderson now moves over to four, so we finally got it right for this one off for the under 21 championship of 91. As I say, that Mort Anderson elects to pull back from the tapes. He comes back into line this time. Settling, green lights on straight away, away, and Morton Anderson gets a drop on the edge of Brian Anderson gets inside him on that pit's corner. Morton forces Morton wide right on the pit's corner, and it's Brian Anderson shows in for Morton Anderson. So reverse the one they met in heat number six at the moment. There's Brian Anderson on the outside line. Morton Anderson cuts back for an inside pass at Brian Anderson. Already building himself a 20 yard lead now as a race. Then they're back straight for the second time. Brian Anderson from Morton Anderson. And so often happens, the one off is decided at the gate. And it's Brian Anderson that same 20 on it. Van is now can put in lap number two. And Morton Anderson's really got a motor to get to him now. And so they're back straight, they go on lap number three. A little bit of ominous blue smoke coming out of the exhaust of Brian Anderson. He leads on that uh, Coventry corner. Coming on to lap four. Brian Anderson from Morton Anderson. The lead is increasing all the time. So revenge for Brian Anderson over Morton. And he's going to become the under-21 champion of the world in 1991. So winning one in the one-off for Brian Anderson. Second is Morton Anderson. So Brian Anderson, the world under-21 champion. Morton Anderson is second. And Jason Lyons is in third place. Morton Anderson as well. All happened to Morton at the moment. They go down together. They shake hands. That's nice to see. And they're going to... Come round, all up and on a bird sheet together. The gate was just the difference. Brian Anderson made the gate, got to the corner first, took Morton Anderson wide up on that uh, pits corner and raced away for the winning ride there in race number 21. So Brian Anderson, the winner, second, Morton Anderson. Second course in white was Morton Anderson. And certainly on his performance the tonight, if Newcastle Diamonds do sign, they've got to be a very, very useful catch indeed. Nice to see Eric Gunderton out there to uh, applaud both the Andersons after their first and second places tonight. And once again, Denmark very much to the fore. We have to congratulate them. So we'll bring the boys over then in the uh, finishing orders, as always, as we do in all British cha in all Speedway Championship meetings. Then we'll bring them in reverse order first. Appreciation for the man who finished in third position of this home fire world under 21 championship from Australia, Jason Lyons. Well done to Jason Lyons, third place. And Carl Christian Sen hands over the garland for Jason. <laughs> so a hard meeting and a, a worthy third place. Mr. John Taylor, Managing Director of CPL, hands over the bronze medal. And Morris Ducker, Chairman of the British Speedway Promoters Association, hands over the third place trophy. So well done to Jason Lyons. And so we march on with the runner-up for the world and the 21 championship from Denmark, Morten Anderson. Well done, Morten. A hard, fierce, 
final runoff race to determine the champion and uh, well, what can we say? We can miss right with Morton, but second place, silver medal, of course. There's Milo Verner handing over the garland. Mr. John Taylor hands over the silver medal. And the second place trophy from Morris Decker from the VSBA. Well, that's a Morton Anderson. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the 1991 World Under-21 Speedway Champion, Brian Anderson! <laughs> Well done, Brian. So Brian takes his place on top of the rostrum and a wave as well. <laughs> and Eric Gunderson pleased as punch over here. Now there goes the Samurai girl with the, uh, the garland. Oh. oh, yes. And the official kiss as well. John Taylor hands over the gold medal for Brian. the home fire trophy from John Taylor, the sponsors of tonight's event and the CBL. And finally, Mr. Morris Ducker from the BSBA with the official FIM Championship Trophy for the World Under 21 Champion, Mr. Brian Anderson. So ladies and gentlemen, if I can ask you please to be upstanding for the Danish National Anthem. champion Brian Anderson. Brian, what a sensational night for you. How do you feel? It was just great. The friends and I have gone on stage and it's just wonderful. They uh, helped me through the whole meeting so uh, it was just great. It has been a great year for Denmark this year and you really put the cap on it tonight. That's just because uh, we are good. <laughs> <laughs> and modest, and what, quite rightly. Well done, Brian Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and there goes the champers. Let's watch that go. We'll get the, uh, the barrage of press photographers here. My Patrick from the Speedway Star, always foremost in uh, pointing his camera in the right direction. Carpenter down here as well, John Hipkiss as well. The cameras of uh, TV2 in Denmark. And of course our own uh, circuit videos as well, which will be available soon. Here it comes, the moment we waited for as we all move away from the rostrum as Brian lets rip with the uh, cork from the champagne in a moment, yes. It's funny how everybody moves, isn't it? Go on, Brian, go on, Brian, let it rip. <laughs> It's a wonderful face. <laughs> yeah. Morton, give him a hand. <laughs> That's funny. When we super glued it in, we were all right. Keep, keep going. Where's these strong Danish muscles? Oh, yes! <laughs> there it goes. A blast of champagne for everyone. Uh, what a happy man. Brian Anderson there. Morton Anderson in second place. And Jason Lyons finishing third. And a great event, I think you'll agree, ladies and gentlemen, all the competitors tonight put up a, a sparkling performance here at the Brandon Track at Coventry. So we congratulate all of them. Uh, but, uh, of course, we do congratulate our uh, three winners for this evening. Second place rider, Morton Anderson. Morton, many congratulations, finishing second in the Under-21 under Championship tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. We... You beat Brian when you met in heat number six, but yeah. the difference in the runoff was he just outgated you to the first corner. I had a bad, uh, I had a bad start, the bad, the baddest I had today, and he beat me in the start, and it was over. He was just driving. 
If you had have won the toss, would you have taken the inside gates for the runoff? Of course I would. Then I have won it. <laughs> it was your first ride here at Coventry. Did you enjoy racing on the Coventry track? It was uh, one of the best tracks I ever tried on. It was perfect. But there wasn't so many people here. It, I, I think it was bad. Obviously, that there would have been more people yesterday, it being a Sunday, if the meeting had not been rained off. Yes. Any thoughts of you riding for a British club in the British League? Yes. I don't know. I wait and see what uh, what uh, the situation is. <laughs> yes. Anyway, many congratulations on your second place tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I've now got with me third place man Jason Lyons. Jason, first of all, many congratulations on your third place this evening. Thanks very much. Yeah. I think everybody else was busy watching the Andersons and Shane Parker. They forgot about you, and when you went out and beat Shane Parker, you brought. <laughs> we'll start again with that one. I think everybody was watching the two Andersons and Shane Parker, but when you went out and beat Shane Parker, you brought yourself right back into contention. It was um, unlucky for Shane crashing that with that the young Russian, but that's the way it goes, you know. There's four riders out there to win the runway, so out of 20 races, there's bound to be a couple of accidents, which is it's not nice, but you know it's bound to happen. Very impressive finish to the meeting for you, with, with you winning both your fourth and your fifth rides. Yeah, it was just a um, matter of getting myself going and to do it. And I had gate one out of both of them, so... And that's not the easiest gate, I don't think, here. And it, it wasn't easy. I had to fight, really, to get in front. But, um, no, it was good. It paid off. And now all I've got to do now is try and put five rides together instead of two. Yeah. There were some pretty hectic first corners tonight with the safety fence taking a fair old pound in tonight. Um, I don't really know what it's from. I think it's just, you know, the, all the riders trying so hard to win, you know, because it, it's, you know, there's like three, two or three rounds to actually get here, you know, and it's easier for me this time because like, I didn't only had to travel from Glasgow. And, um, you know, you got Russians and Poles, and, you know, and they travel for hours, and now they've got to turn around and go home. So I think that's why it's such a tough tough game because there's so much travelling in it and you don't want to go home, you know, back to Russia with no points in your belt, you know, you, you want to do something, don't you? And despite the fact it was a Monday night, there was a good contingent of Glasgow fans here tonight to cheer you home. Yeah, it was really good. Um, Glasgow supporters, you know, they're always with you. You know, if you go bad, they're, they're still behind you. You know, they'll help you out however they can. So I'm pleased to get a medal. You know, for myself and for the Glasgow people, really, because you know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. I'd be still sitting at home in Australia. And to cop a great season, you want to go out and beat Arena Essex in the Division Two Cup final? Well, hopefully um, the Glasgow team and myself can all pull our weight in the two rounds and come out in front. We were in front by a fair way at, at Glasgow, but that got rained off, but that was fair enough. So hopefully we can do it. Thanks a lot, Jason, and congratulations on your third place this evening. Thanks very much. Thank you. I've now got with me the world under-21 champion, Brian Anderson. Brian, first of all, many congratulations on a superb performance this evening. Thank you. I spoke to you at the interval. You got eight points from three starts then, and you said you were still very much in the hunt, but a long way to go. But things went your way after the interval. Yeah, they just uh, went my way, and I'm not very happy with my starts uh, gate. So, uh, but in the runoff, I just just did it. So uh, I'm very happy. It was interesting because when you met Morton in heat number six, he beat you in that race, but you got your revenge in the runoff. How important was the position at the gate for you in that runoff? Uh, I won the, um, I won the, uh, toss. yeah, toss. So I can, I could have him where I wanted. So um, I thought that the second gate was the best, and it, it just was. 
So uh, I'm I'm very pleased that it it went my way. So there was a little bit of confusion at the start. You obviously wanted gate number two, and it looks if like the starting marshal was trying to put you into gate number one. Yeah. Uh, when we did the charge over uh, over in the in the pit, uh, and I uh, wanted uh, one of the the marshals come over to me and said that I uh, should wear the red uh, color helmet color. So uh, I t put it on and when we got to the gates, uh, they want me to put in the first gates. So. But uh, then <laughs> I explained that I want the tar so um, the gig, uh, it went as I wish. So that was good. Yeah, just, just great. So. Tremendous season for Denmark. Individual world champion, world pairs champions. World Team Cup champions, and now you World Under-21 champion. Once again, the Danes seem to win everything in Speedway. Yeah, now we have uh, some some young guys. Uh, you see Morten and Jacob, and we are the new come-up, so uh, there, there has to be some who can take over when we have Snilsen and they are, are gone, so it's going the right way in, in Danish Speedway. It was your first meeting at the Coventry track. How did you find the Coventry track tonight? Uh, how did I find it? Yeah, I, in the practice it's, it wasn't very good. Uh, it was uh, very grippy. Uh, uh, but I like grippy tracks. So, and, but in, when the meeting started, it was just great. I like the uh, current very much, so, so that's, that's just good. Yeah. Thank you very much, Brian, and many, many congratulations again, World Under-21 champion. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going, Schlein to Brian Anderson? Congratulations to him, obviously delighted, 14 points. And on the truck, it's Mort Anderson with 14, and uh, Jason Lyons finished on 11. Well, thank you for being with us. We do appreciate that some of you have had to travel a very long way, particularly the Scottish supporters to be with us tonight and uh, you probably have to miss some time, time off work. Have a safe journey home and for all local supporters we look forward to seeing you again a week on Saturday. In the meantime, from all of us here at Coventry Speedway, safe journey and a very, very good night.